Welcome back to another video brought to you by ISCA Engineering. In the last video we covered symbols and abbreviations that are used in motor and control diagrams. In this video we will learn how to read and create ladder diagrams. If you haven't watched the previous video, I recommend that you go ahead and watch that one first and then come back and watch this one. It will make more sense as this is a continuation of the first video. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on our future videos. And while you're at it, hit the thumbs up. So let's get started. There are several types of control diagrams that are used when installing, maintaining, and troubleshooting motor control circuits. One of the most common is called a ladder diagram. The ladder diagram focuses on the electrical operation of a circuit and not on the physical location of the device. The vertical lines in a ladder diagram are called rails. They connect to the power source and are identified as line 1, L1, and line 2, L2. The horizontal lines are called rungs. They are connected across L1 and L2. These lines contain the control circuitry. Ladder diagrams are designed to be read like a book. Start from the top left and read from left to right and top to bottom. Using a ladder diagram makes it easier to trace through the operation of a circuit. The ladder diagram shows only the single phase circuit and does not show the three phase power circuit that is supplied to the motor. Sometimes you'll see diagrams that include both power and control circuit wiring, but most of the time you'll see the power circuit being separate from the control circuit. Conductors that cross each other but make no electrical contact are represented by intersecting lines with no dot. On the other hand, conductors that make contact are represented by a dot where they meet. In some cases, the control voltage is obtained directly from the power circuit or sometimes from a step-down transformer that is connected to the power circuit. Using a transformer allows us to step a high voltage down to a low voltage, a 120 VAC, for control use while supplying the three-phase motor power circuit with a higher voltage, in this case 480 VAC. The motor operates more efficiently with high voltage. A ladder diagram gives us the information needed to easily follow the sequence of operation of the circuit. It also allows for easy troubleshooting because we can see the effects that the opening and closing of contacts has on other devices in the circuit. All switches and contacts are classified as normally open, NO, or normally close, NC. The state that we see it on the electrical control diagrams is the state that the device would be found when it's bought and not installed in a circuit. This is referred to as off the shelf or de-energized state. It is very important to learn this concept as this is the state in how the switches are drawn in a circuit. When we mention de-energized position, we are referring to the component position when the circuit is de-energized or when there is no power in the circuit. The method that is typically used to identify the relay coil and its contacts is by placing a letter or letters in the circle that represents the coil. Each contact that is operated by this coil will have the coil letter written next to the symbol for the contact. When we have several contacts that are being operated by one coil, it is a good idea to add numbers to identify the contact. When using a CAD software like AutoCAD Electrical, this feature is automatically added when adding a coil relay to your diagram. A load is a circuit component that has resistance and consumes power that is supplied from L1 and L2. Some examples of loads are coils, solenoids, horns, and pilot lights. Note that at least one load must be present in each rung of a ladder diagram. Not having a load in a rung will result in switching an open circuit into a short circuit between L1 and L2. When contacts from devices such as switches, push buttons, and relays are in the closed states, they have no resistance. Connecting contacts and loads in parallel can also result in a short circuit when the contacts close. This is because current takes the path of least resistance, causing the energized load to short circuit. Usually, loads are placed on the right side on the ladder diagram next to L2, and contacts are placed on the left side next to L1. One exception to this rule is the placement of the normally closed contacts controlled by the motor overload protection device. In this case, the contacts are drawn on the right side of the motor starter. When there is a need to energize two or more loads at the same time, it is best to connect the loads in parallel rather than in series. 
Doing so ensures that the loads get the full line voltage. When loads are connected in series, neither of them get the full voltage. The voltage in this case is divided between the loads. Push buttons, switches, limit switches, and pressure switches are devices that make it possible to control loads. Devices that start a load are usually connected in parallel, and devices that stop the load are connected in series. For example, multiple start buttons controlling the same motor would be connected in parallel, while multiple stop buttons would be connected in series. All control devices are identified by the appropriate marking. Similarly, loads are required to have abbreviations to indicate the type of load. When several devices of the same types are on the same circuits, it is good practice to use numerical suffixes to help differentiate among them. For example, a control circuit with two motor starters, we can identify the coil as M1, M2, and M3. Control circuits can get complex very quickly. Its size can increase fast, making it difficult to read it and understand it. In this case, we use rung numbering. Rung numbering allows us to read and understand large, complex ladder diagrams. Each rung of the ladder diagram should be labeled, starting with the top rung and reading down. A rung can be defined as a complete path from L1 to L2 that contains a load. This diagram shows the markings of each rung in a line diagram with three separate rungs. The path from rung 1 is completed through push button 1, push button 2, limit switch 1, and the control relay 1. In rung 2, the path is completed through the reverse push button 1, the normally open contacts of control relay 1, the limit switch, and the control relay 1. Note that even though rung 1 and rung 2 control the same load, they must be identified as two separate rungs. Rung 3 is completed through the normally closed contact of control relay 1, through motor starter 1, and through its overload relay. You get the idea of how a rung path is completed. Numerical cross-referencing is used in conjunction with rung numbering to help us locate auxiliary contacts controlled by a coil. There are times when auxiliary contacts are not in the same ladder diagram as the coil that controls their operation. In order to locate these contacts, rung numbers are listed to the right of L2, 0 VDC, on the rung of the coil controlling their operation. The contacts of CR1 appear on three different locations in the line diagram. The numbers located to the right of the coil identify the line location and the type of contacts controlled by the coil. The numbers with no special marking are for the normally open contacts and the numbers for the normally closed contacts are identified by underlining or overscoring the number. This way we can distinguish them from normally open contacts. In this circuit example, coil CR controls three sets of contacts, CR11, CR12, and CR13. In order to correctly connect the control circuit conductors, some type of wire identification is needed. The method used for wire identification varies for each manufacturer. For simplicity, this shows one method where each common point is assigned a reference number. Numbering starts with all the wires that are connected to L1. A number 1 is assigned. Continuing with rung 1 at the top left, a new number is assigned sequentially for each wire that crosses a component. Wires that are electrically common are marked with the same number. Once the first wire connected directly to L2 has been designated, in this case 5, all other wires directly connected to L2 will be marked with the same numbers. In this case, the number of components in line 1 determines the wire number for conductors connected directly to L2. Another method that can be used in assigning wire numbers and is preferred by ISCA is the sheet and line referencing system. Using a software like AutoCAD Electrical to design ladder diagrams can help automate the numbering of wires. After the wires for L1 and L2 have been determined, the numbering used by ISCA consists of numbering the wire by their rung number and increasing in sequential order starting at the top left of the diagram. This method has its advantage, the fact that all wires directly connected to L2 are always assigned with 115. A broken line in a control circuit diagram normally indicates a mechanical connection. Be careful to not make the mistake of reading a broken line as part of the electrical circuit. This ladder diagram contains a forward and reverse push button. 
The broken lines on these buttons indicate that their normally open and normally closed contacts are mechanically connected. When pressing the button, one set of contacts will open and the other set will close. The broken lines between the M1 and M2 coils indicate that the two are mechanically interlocked. This means that the contacts of M1 and M2 cannot be closed at the same time because of the mechanical interlocking action of the device. Depending on your location, the secondary side of the control transformer can be required to be grounded. If this is the case, the ground connection must be made so that an accidental ground in the control circuit will not start the motor or make the stop button or control inoperative. The example on the left shows the secondary of the control transformer properly grounded. When the circuit is operating, the entire circuit to the left of the motor coil is the ungrounded circuit, the hot leg. In this scenario, if there was a fault path to ground in the ungrounded circuit, the ungrounded circuit will create a short circuit condition causing the control transformer fuse to open. The example on the right shows the secondary of the transformer incorrectly grounded. In this scenario, the circuit is grounded at L1. In case of a fault path to ground to the left of the motor coil, the coil would become energized, starting the motor unexpectedly. The fuse would not operate to open the circuit and the stop button would not de-energize the motor coil. This is not a good scenario as equipment damage and personnel injuries would be very likely. As you can see, output devices must directly be connected to the grounded side of the circuit. This concludes the topic of understanding electrical drawings. In the next video, we will be covering motor connections. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Follow us on Instagram at ISCA underscore engineering for daily posts on electricity, controls, automation, and much more. Thanks for watching.